Good morning and welcome to worship at Lamb of God Lutheran Episcopal Church in Fort Myers, Florida. It is once again wonderful to see so many of you this morning and to welcome you as well, those who are viewing us on Facebook. Again, I cannot tell you what a difference it makes to see all your smiling faces. Thank you for being with us this morning. I really only have one announcement this morning, and that is that we keep in our prayers the family, uh, the Taplin family, at the loss of their daughter on Palm Sunday. Please keep the family in your prayers. More information will be coming out about the memorial service as we move through our time of quarantine. Now let us begin to worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessings, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You are the Israelites. Listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you. As you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the, the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently that our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us today. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on the throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that, all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Amen. A reading from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that through perishable 
is tested, that though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord, but he said, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you might come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, good morning again. And what I have to say to you this morning is that it is known as Low Sunday in the church. And it's low Sunday in the church because we've had this huge celebration on Easter and we all celebrated and we all were together. And then the following Sunday, pastors go on vacation and everybody goes home and really nobody comes to church on the Sunday after Easter. Well, guess what? It is the lowest Sunday of the year for attendance in the church everywhere. However, I will also share with you today that it is probably the highest numbers that churches are experiencing during this pandemic as people join us on Zoom and on Facebook. And we are touching so many people after the services close out and they're uplifted into YouTube. So it's really not low Sunday. It's quite the opposite as we gather together this morning. There's other similarities though that I'd like to share with you as we talk about Low Sunday and where people are locked in our houses. It's very similar to what we heard in the reading today about the disciples, right? They were locked in a room for fear of the authorities, for fear of what might happen to them because they were followers of Jesus Christ. And here we all are, here we all are wondering and fearing the outside, what's outside of the place where we are. We are nervous, we are anxious, 
We're afraid of what's going to happen when we go outside. Will we get it or will we give it to someone? So we're all locked up in this fear. The difference is Jesus shows up to the disciples and he says, look, here I am. And he shows them his hands and he shows them his side and they have an opportunity to believe. And then in comes Thomas and he's not going to believe because he needs proof. And the poor guy, Thomas, he really gets the raw end of the deal here. People call him Doubting Thomas. They've always referred to him that way. But folks, I'm here to tell you that when Mary Magdalene saw Jesus on that morning, the third day, she didn't believe it either until she saw. The disciples didn't believe until they saw. So what makes Thomas any different? Because he too wants to see. It's trust, but verify. Trust, but verify. And Thomas got that opportunity. But what we don't hear and what we don't know is whether or not Thomas put his fingers in Jesus' hands or side to see if this really was Jesus. But what we do know is that he said, my Lord and my God. He believed. He trusted. But he verified it. And you know, that is part of our DNA, because if you would call it the very beginning of this reading today, we heard that Jesus breathed on the disciples. The breath that he breathed on them was filled with the Holy Spirit, that life-giving breath. It is that same breath that has been breathed into all of us when God created us. Because when God created us, God created human beings in a remarkable way. We have brains, and we think things through, and we have a heart, and we feel things as well. So we do have the ability to trust with our hearts, but to verify. And it happens throughout our lives that we trust and we verify. So I don't know about you, but in this period of isolation, there's not a lot of experiences outside my home because we are isolating. I get to see a lot of you via Zoom meetings, but, you know, we're interacting. Well, how do you interact with other people outside of your community, like when you do shopping online, right? That's one way that we can socialize kind of with people. So here's my story about trust and verify. Think with your head, even though we feel with our heart. Our granddaughter's turning 15 this week. So I found something online for her. Beautiful little bracelet, and it touched my heart because it said that Psalm 91 is greater than 19, referring to COVID-19. Now, this bracelet, not only was it beautiful, but all the proceeds from the purchase of this goes to a charity to children. It was the perfect gift. And if you know what Psalm 91 is, it is that no harm shall come to you. I will raise you up on eagle's wings. I mean, this was the perfect gift for my granddaughter. The excitement filled me. It just filled me. Called my daughter, sent her the link. She said, Mom, it'll be beautiful, so I ordered it. I put my credit card information in, put the right addresses in, did everything right, hit that submit button, got an email back saying that the order was in process, and I checked my credit card, and already the credit, you know, went through. It was pending. I should say it was pending. So I was very excited, done with that present. And then about a half an hour later, I get an email from the place that I was purchasing it from. And in the email, the person said he was the CFO, said because they have had a high volume of fraud because of the COVID-19 virus, that people were purchasing things, they would ship them out 
they would cancel their credit card, but they would not ship the item back. And because of that, they needed a copy of my driver's license and my credit card, to which I was not going to do that. So I wrote back very politely saying, I respect where you're at. I understand that all these things and these terrible things are happening during this time of pandemic. However, like you don't know me, I don't know you. So therefore, I will not be sending a copy of my driver's license or my credit card. I am though a very honest person. I'm a pastor and I realize that you don't know that, but this is a gift for my granddaughter. And if we can work this out, fine. If we can't work it out, okay, cancel my order. Trust, but verify. He wrote back and he said, I understand and I'm pleading with you to trust us, <laughs> to trust us. Just during this time, I have the order, I'm ready to ship it, we can go ahead and do this. And I wrote back, cancel the order. Trust, but verify. I went to my credit card to the company, called them immediately. They said, well, we can't do anything unless it goes through officially when it moves from pending to charge. And I recall reading an email, the CFO saying, I would never charge a credit card without shipping the gift. Well, trust, but verify folks. My heart was breaking. I thought I was doing the right thing with my head, but my heart was saying, you should really maybe trust people more, Carol. But do you know this brain that God gives us? Uh, not so much. Well, Saturday morning, I checked my credit card and the charge went through. Of course, there was a stop on it. Trust, but verify. So how then does this apply to the resurrection this morning? Folks, it's really important to read that very last verse that says, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And through that believing, you may have life in his name. Jesus did all kinds of miracles. There were all kinds of signs pointing to him as being God's son that we read in the Bible. We read the story of the resurrection, but we aren't there. We weren't there. So then how then do we come to faith in this? Somebody, my friends, told you the story about the resurrection because somebody told them the story. And it is through this storytelling that we come to believe. But what's more important is that when we have this belief in our hearts, even though we can't verify it, we experience this presence of Jesus every single day in our lives when you believe. And that experience we are seeing with all the people that are stepping out right now, not into a world where we're supposed to social distance, but by helping other people, but by providing support, doctors, nurses, people giving to food pantries. That is the visual of the resurrected Christ. How can you miss that when you see all that's happening in the world? And I'm also telling you today that your board and your congregation, we are now busy prepping for things to do, to step out and help other people. You'll be hearing things this week about food pantries and the power of 10, though I think we're calling it COVID-10. And when we come together as groups of people of 10, it's to check in on each other, to experience the resurrected Christ, and then to think about what is it that we can do in this different time to live out the resurrected Christ. You see, I know Christ resurrected in my head and in my heart. They've come together because I see it all the time and I experience it. 
Thanks be to God. Amen. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. Let us pray. Holy Father, we pray for your church around the world and those of us gathered in the virtual community of Lamb of God. Grant us all the wisdom and longing to seek concord, compromise, and consideration. We lift up all who serve you, especially our national and local bishops, Pastor Carol, and all the people who work so diligently to maintain our community in this period of social distancing. Son of Righteousness, as we endure the self-isolation of this worldwide health crisis, help us to remain strong in faith and trust in you. Father, you have given us the means to fight this modern day plague, and we must trust our scientists, frontline workers, and leaders to tell us the truth and do their job. Gracious Lord, we pray that you bless and receive home those who have died. Let us not grieve as those with no hope, but rest assured in the promise you have given us of eternal life in Jesus. All this we pray in the name of Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. And at this time, we give you thanks for the gifts that we have received throughout this month and in this difficult time for those that continue to support the mission and ministry of your people. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day, you shower us with blessings. As you, as you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it for all to drink saying, this is the cup of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray with confidence in the words that our Savior has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be grace, gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace, remember the poor, boldly, intentionally, and joyfully. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you, man. Morning. What have you here today? Holy smokes. Nice. Good morning. Really wonderful to see you. Good with you all. Yeah, they're at the pool, huh?